Good morning, class. This is Mr. Samuel. I hope you guys had an excellent Christmas break. I am actually on my way back from Florida today, so I won't be able to be there with you today. So I wanted to record a lecture so that you guys wouldn't miss me too much. So today I'm going to do this lecture from a distance. Now you should have some handouts, the handouts for chapter 9, and the handouts for chapter 9 is dealing with energy of the cell. It might be a little different, no, it will be a little different in your handouts because some of the things in your handouts haven't been updated, but the content will be the same. So you can follow along with your handouts and fill in the blanks. I try to highlight the things that you need to fill in in yellow. So you can fill them in by just looking on the screen and following along. Also, there are some pictures in your handouts that aren't in this um, this presentation because I redid those pictures so that I can do some cus custom animations and so on. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them, but I won't answer them because I'm not there. Um, but you can follow along and hopefully everything is pretty clear and that so that you can understand it. So today we're going to be going over section 9.1, which is the section dealing with ATP. And I'll try to remember to take some pauses for you to um, fill in some of the blanks. So if I pause, that's the reason I'm pausing so that you can fill those things in. So let's get into it. You'll see that in these, in the two sections that we're going to do today, we're going to do section 9.1 and 9.2. Um, I'm going to start and end by giving you an overview of what we're doing. That is not in your handout, but the content of the rest is still the same. So in this section, first I'm going to answer the question, what is energy? Okay. Energy is a very important concept for us to understand, so I'm going to answer that question. Then I'm going to talk about what ATP is and how it works, um, because ATP is very important in our understanding of energy. And lastly, I'm going to talk about some noteworthy people, and these are people that have contributed a significant amount to what we know and understand today about energy. So we're going to talk about a few of those guys so that you can be familiarized with some of those people. So let's get right into it. What is energy? Um, energy is the ability to do work, whether you're riding bikes, studying, walking, breathing, or doing mitosis like we spoke about in the last chapter. Um, that takes energy. This guy here in the picture is running, in the video is running, and in order for him to run, he needs to have energy. So we're going to talk about what this energy is. Um, how, how this energy works and how it's produced. Um, so we're going to talk about how the body stores and produces energy because we need to understand that to have a good understanding of how this thing works. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP. ATP is a molecule in the cell that allows quick and easy access to energy when needed by the cell's organelles. All right, in the last chapter, we, we spoke about the cell, and we spoke about the different organelles in the cells. And in order for them to do what they do, they need to have access to energy, and ATP is what provides that energy. It's kind of like the energy currency of the body. And you can see here from this diagram that I made, here we have one A and three Ps. The A is for adenosine, and the Ps are for phosphate. And you can see we have three phosphate groups attached to one molecule of adenosine. This is ATP. This is the energy source of the body, the energy currency of the body, and it's what we're going to be talking about in section 9.1. It's a type of chemical energy, and, and it releases energy when the chemical bonds are broken. So we have these three phosphates. When the bonds between phosphates are broken, the phosphate groups are broken, energy is released, and that energy can be used by the body, by the organelles in the cell, so that we can do what we need to do. I hope that makes sense, and we're going to move on to the next slide. Now, I said ATP, and that's adenosine triphosphate. Um, and just like if you're riding a tricycle, it has how many wheels? Three wheels. Um, so what we're going to do is look at three prefixes. The first one, if it's adenosine monophosphate, mono, of course, refers to one. So it would be one phosphate group, as you can see here. And then the next one would be, not biphosphate like a bicycle, but diphosphate, which is two phosphate groups. So if we have two phos phosphate groups attached, 
then we would call that adenosine diphosphate and we're going to be talking about that today and lastly like we said before adenosine triphosphate has three phosphate groups so we have mono di and tri and you should be able to to explain to me what those three prefixes mean so let's move on all right so energy i mean atp is the energy source source of the body and it's kind of like the battery of the cell if you have a remote control car uh, you want it to run, you need to put batteries in. Well, if you have a human being, you want that person to run, or you have a plant or any organism, you want that organism to run, you need some kind of energy source, and ATP source. ATP is that energy source. Now, the way it works is ATP actually binds to a specific site on a protein molecule, um, and, and that's similar to putting the batteries in a flashlight. Um, so you put the batteries in, uh, in a human body, you would put ATP in, and that binds to a specific site, and that provides the energy. Or that, that begins the process of providing the energy. Now, once the bond between one of the phosphate groups is broken, ATP becomes ADP, because it's releasing one of those phosphate by, by breaking the bonds, and it no longer is a triphosphate it becomes a diphosphate. And we're going to look at an animation of this a little later. Um, I think it's in two slides or whatever. And we're going to talk about, we're going to actually see how the process works. Now, just like you have those rechargeable batteries, um, when you use them and they die out, you have to put them back into something and then you recharge them into the charger and you recharge it. And then it can be used again. This is the same thing by, like with ATP. When ATP is used, it becomes ADP, so adenosine diphosphate. And then when we want to recharge it so that we can use it again, we have to make it back into ATP. And this happens, and you know this from last chapter, this happens in the mitochondria. The mitochondria is what recharges the ADP back to ATP so that it can be used. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we spoke about um, the parts of a cell, the organelles in a cell in chapter 7, and the mitochondria was the one that was involved in energy production, and now you can see how that's the case, because it recharges the battery, it recharges ADP so that it can become ATP, and we can use it again. All right, so let's look at this little animation. Here we can see a process to the right in blue, and that process needs energy to happen. And this is a simple illustration just to show how it works. But whatever that process is, it needs energy. Now, what is going to provide that energy? And you should all be answering ATP because that's the energy currency of the body. So here we have a molecule of ATP. It's going to go over to that process or um, that protein or whatever it is that needs to get that little energy boost. And then the next thing we said that happens is the bond between the phosphates are broken. And you can see here, it releases that phosphate and that phosphate binds to that process or the protein and it gives it energy. So now it has the energy that it needs to do whatever it needs to do. All right, does that make sense? So the ATP comes to the protein or the process that needs to happen. It releases that phosphate. And because that bond between those phosphates are broken, energy is released. That phosphate that is bound to the, the protein can now energize it and it can do what it needs to do. Now, how did we say the ATP gets recharged? Well, let's get rid of this process that um, needed the energy, and let's focus on this ADP. We said that in order for it to be recharged, it has to go back to the mitochondria. So let's bring it to the mitochondria now. And now that it's in the mitochondria, it gets recharged. And the way it gets recharged, I'm sure you can all guess, we're simply going to add a phosphate group. And once that phosphate group is added, it is recharged, and it can be used again. Okay, so it breaks the bond between the phosphate groups that the, the last phosphate group attaches to the protein, energizes the protein, it becomes a DP, and in order for it to be used again, 
it needs to be recharged by going to the mitochondria and then getting a new phosphate attached to it. Hope that makes sense. Um, the animation makes it so that you can see how the process happens. Of course, this is a simplified animation, but it does give you a good idea of how it works. So now that we know how ATP works, let's talk about those noteworthy people who have contributed a lot to what we know about energy and ATP today. First person we're going to talk about is Fritz Lippmann. Um, he is a United States biochemist and he won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1953. He did a lot of research into the process by which cells convert basic elements of food into energy. And those are the two highlighted words, food and energy. And what I want you to do, be able to remember is Fritz Lippmann, food, energy. Fritz Lippmann, food, and energy. You don't need to know the dates or anything. Um, these guys that we're talking about are all Nobel Prize winners, so you're gonna all you're gonna know that. But you need to know that Fritz Lippmann studied processes by which cells convert basic elements of food into energy. Next person we're gonna talk about is Dennis Mitchell, and he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1978 and he won the award for his research into the process a cell goes through to generate a molecule called ATP which is the immediate so source of energy for all cells so the key words here are ATP as energy okay so ADP, ATP is energy for all cells and we spoke about that process and that's the process that he was the first to describe so that's Dennis Mitchell ATP energy Next, we're going to talk about Edmund Fisher. Um, he's another American biologist. He won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1992. And he demonstrated how cells break down the keywords here, sugar in the bloodstream for use as fuel. Okay, so sugar, bloodstream, and fuel. Edmund Fisher, you want to highlight those words and that's what I want you to remember. And last but not least, Edwin Krebs, and his name is going to come up a little later. Um, but Edwin Krebs won the Nobel Prize in 1992 in physiology or medicine, and he detailed the process by which cells break down glycogen in the bloodstream and burn it as fuel. You can see the keywords there glycogen, bloodstream, fuel. All right, so those are the guys that I want you to know. Fritz Lippmann, Edwin Fish Fisher, Dennis Mitchell, Edwin Krebs. Those are the guys that um, I want you to remember as people who has made significant contribution to what we know today about energy, about ATP, and about how the body uses ATP and produces ATP and breaks down glucose and glycogen so that we can have that energy. So in review, I've answered the question, what is energy? Then I, talk, I spoke about what ATP is and how it works. And lastly, I went over a few noteworthy people who I want you to remember. That is it for section 9.1 and now we're going to go into section 9.2.